YouTube tells many stories. Stories about people. Stories about things and places. Some of those stories are about people dealing with the fortune and notoriety that comes with being successful on YouTube. Some of those stories are about how being successful isn't quite what you expected it to be. And some of those stories are about how YouTube can build and destroy friendships. This is such a story. These guys are two of the most relaxed chaps you're ever likely to watch on this platform filled with attention grabbing screamers and drama queens. They run a small YouTube channel with a quirky marketing strategy and all they do is talk about films. Like me. I'd say they're a channel on their way up and their endeavours on YouTube has led to other opportunities. They're a great example of how to utilise the skills and exposure one gains from being a YouTuber. But it wasn't always this way. Let's go backwards and then periodically jump forwards again. Like a Tarantino movie, but you know, much shitter. If you're lost and you look, then you will find me. Time after time, another, another, I'll be waiting. Time after time. Good stuff. Well, you know, I was thinking about bringing Mandy. Mandy. These two unassuming characters are Duncan and Richard. Two halves of Valverde Broadcasting. Or at least they will be. Right now, they're just two people on separate paths. They don't even know each other yet. What they do have are skill sets. One, an eye for lighting and cameras, and the other, an ear for accents and voices. It usually takes a few tries before being able to comfortably insert a tampon. <laughs> it was in this video, years before I had even created a YouTube account, where I was first entertained by these two. <laughs> Don't point that bug at me, you little fuck. <laughs> With your edumacation. <laughs> edumacation, you fucking douchebag. Speaking of your fucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> fucking science douchebag in here. <laughs> they spent the entire of this video providing their own hilarious voiceovers for the old Spider-Man TV miniseries from the 1970s. They were genuinely much more entertaining than the actual series they were watching. They were both friends of another English YouTuber, Oliver Harper, which is how they ended up in this video. They had excellent on-screen chemistry and their sense of humour played off each other perfectly. So much so, that Oliver became a background extra in his own video. It was their mutual affinity for stereotypes and comical Brooklyn accents which made this video such fun to watch. For many fans, it was a favourite video for a long time. Even before he became a fixture on Oliver's channel, Richard had shown that he had a good grasp of shot composition and editing. And although this video was just a funny skit, it was obvious he took the time to dress his set and think about his shots. Skills that would come in useful much later. This is what Richard produced before appearing on Oliver Harper's channel. Well composed and somewhat funny videos. It was this skill set which would ultimately be the gateway to his appearance on Oliver Harper's channel. Well, that and being a close friend of Ollie's. Meanwhile... This chap was working out while trying to figure out ways to further his acting career. It was while listening to a movie commentary that he came up with the idea to get in touch with a YouTuber and see if he could feature on the channel. The 
channel he was listening to? Oliver Harper. Duncan got in touch with Ollie, whose channel had around 50,000 subs at that time, with a view to working together. As a somewhat ruthless YouTube climber, Ollie decided to take Duncan's kind offer, and he recorded a commentary for the James Bond movie, Skyfall. YouTube, it seemed, had brought these two individuals together, and given them the opportunity to not only become work colleagues and collaborators, but friends. Friends who would make videos together, hang out together, and generally do what friends do. One thing they would do often, is watch movies together. It was at an opening showing to possibly the greatest Marvel movie ever made, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, where Duncan and Richard were to meet. After this, Ollie would then allow the two to create an audio commentary for his channel for the movie. The channel had seen plenty of growth, both from the content that Ollie produced solo and from the now frequent collaborations with Richard and Duncan. A number of new fans had been introduced to the channel via the infamous Spider-Man video, myself included. With the channel receiving its best ever year for both views and income, things were going great. Or so it would seem, but things were beginning to take a turn. At this point, it's only fair to tell you that the next few minutes of this video is a result of posts on various forums from fans, rumours and conjecture on my part. Richard and Duncan refuse to talk about the events with Ollie in any way, shape or form. Their only comments regarding Ollie were how they began and also that he was quite skilled as an editor. It was during this period of channel growth that Richard and Duncan would consider separating from Ollie's channel, in part because they wanted to control their own content, but also because financially speaking they were not receiving fair compensation for their work on the channel. By this stage Ollie had opened a Patreon account, and was in receipt of a reasonable amount of money as a result of the channel's output. What some people suggested however, was that Ollie was not sharing this money fairly. Now, it could be said that as the owner of the channel, Ollie was entitled to keep the money. But imagine, if a movie studio decided not to pay their actors because they owned the content which brought the money in, would we still think it fair? With the channel on the rise and income slowly growing, they decided to tackle a larger project, and so the idea of a documentary was discussed. Eventually, they landed on the idea of making a documentary, focusing on 80s action movies. And so, the three embarked on this new project together, with Richard contributing his camera and cinematography skills, Duncan utilising his industry contacts, and Oliver being director and editor with each having an important place in the production. Or so they thought. Over time, Ollie became more detached from his friends and began to push them out of the project. Was it money? Maybe it was control. Some people say that his new access to industry professionals had tempted him into sidelining his friends that had helped to put him in this position. But the truth is, that only three people know the truth, and all three remain silent. They say the more successful a person becomes, the further away from their roots do they grow, and the behind the scenes issues over money, control, exposure, and who knows what else, became an issue, with only one resolution. And like that, a friendship built and maintained in YouTube was picked apart by its instigator. So with Ollie sidelining his two friends, and with those two already dissatisfied at how things were going, 
they had already begun to discuss the future for themselves, or even if there was one at all. Over time, the two came to realise that their time on Ollie's channel riffing on bad movies and doing hilarious impressions was not just a fun professional environment to have a laugh. Both had realised that while YouTube had welcomed the disintegration of one friendship, it had also connected two people who might never have met. Richard and Duncan shared a similar dry and silly sense of humour, and it's their appearances on YouTube that helped to reveal that. They also found themselves working together often for Ollie's channel, and who knows, maybe they had more fun working in the laid-back environment with each other than they did in the company of the more serious Ollie. Not wanting to repeat the same mistakes of letting YouTube decimate the trust and camaraderie of a good friendship, they made the conscious decision to learn from their previous mishaps with Ollie. And this is where we can glean teachings that will last a millennia. Okay, maybe I exaggerated that a bit. But there is something to learn here. Not wanting to give up on what had become both a passion and a pastime, Richard and Duncan had chat and decided that since they were already leaning in the direction of creating their own channel, why not do this now that Ollie had unceremoniously ejected them from his? What they, and by extension we, had already learned is that success can affect people differently, and that perhaps it's not a good idea to put yourself in a position to be taken advantage of. And so, they instituted some very simple rules. The first one being that both parties had a full and equal share in the channel. Next, they decided that all decisions required dual approval, with both parties holding a veto. Finally, they also decided that the key ingredient of this new partnership, the thing that was missing from their previous arrangement, was to be 100% honest at all times. In truth, the rules were only a safety net, because they both knew that their time on YouTube together had built a much stronger foundation than what they had with the previous manager. Both Richard and Duncan had given the exact same reason for wanting to continue with YouTube. They enjoyed each other's company. Starting a YouTube channel isn't easy. As Richard and Duncan found out, in the beginning, it's an almost eternal grind to get eyes on your content. A grind which they both admitted they had taken for granted when Oliver had been the person grinding. A grind not made any easier by the fact that the fans who had previously watched the pair on Ollie's channel were suddenly unable to watch them now and were prevented from finding Richard and Duncan because Ollie, or someone who worked for him, had now banned the words Richard and Duncan from his comments section so fans couldn't even ask the question where they went. This brings us to their quirky branding. Looking for a way to differentiate themselves from the overwhelming crowd of competitors, Duncan suggested the name Valverde Broadcasting. And they both collectively decided it sounded like a dictatorial communist broadcasting company. From there, they grew into a channel which actually surpasses my own. I think the reason they've seen solid growth in such a relatively short amount of time is down to a few reasons, most of which their story has demonstrated already. They don't take themselves too seriously and take a very laid-back approach to creating content. This helps to create a relaxed environment for the viewers and makes it feel a bit more like relaxing with friends, as opposed to this video which probably feels more like a story. In addition, they're often happy to engage fans in conversation and on occasion even detractors, helping everyone to feel part of the channel. When it came to researching this video, both Richard and Duncan were kind enough to spare some time to answer questions. And while they didn't want to discuss the events with Ollie, there was really no limit on the other areas that they were willing to discuss. YouTube has given them both opportunities that may not otherwise have had without. For Richard, exercising his skills as a cinematographer and continually showcasing them on a public platform has led to being hired in the commercial industry. And now, instead of soul-crushing administration work, he is often employed in soul-crushing commercial work. 
at least it's filmmaking which should. In Duncan's case, it led to more contacts within the industry, even helping him to land a starring role in a narrative-driven game on PlayStation 4. It's called Erica, in case you want to check it out. And while it can be a professional outlet for both parties, in the back of their mind, they'll always have that experience with Ollie to remind them that YouTube can make or break friendships if you allow it to.